Uh, thanks to Dyker for asking me to share some of um, some thoughts I have, some ideas I have about bodywork. So I'm uh, an Alexander Technique teacher and work at the Manchester Buddhist Centre working bodywise uh, part of the week. Not a lot at the moment, of course. Um, haven't, haven't really seen much uh, Alexander Technique work since January. But I'm also uh, one of the senior trainers with Breathworks. And I've been part of the Breathworks team for many years uh, in Manchester. I, some of you may know Breathworks, probably most of you do, but some of you may, may, may not know what Breathworks do. So Breathworks, I'll just say a little bit about that so it gives it a context. Breathworks was set up by Vidya Marla in Manchester in the year 2000. And she designed a course to help people live more effectively with pain and illness. And it was, you know, Vidya Marla herself has got a broken back and has lived in a wheelchair for a big chunk of her life. That course was so, so popular, there was such a demand for it. So it was mindfulness for health in a sense. Um, and uh, she was soon joined by uh, both Sona and Ratnaguna. And so the, the three of them, the team, set about actually designing a course for people who experience anxiety and stress. There was a lot of, there still is a lot of call for that. So Breathworks have been running mindfulness courses for people who are ex experiencing chronic uh, pain, health problems, and also people who are anxious, stressed, uh, that sort of thing. And been running courses in the Manchester city centre and other places for many years. So I'm one of the trainers. I trained with them. And one of the aspects of the breathworks that I particularly enjoy is uh, bodywork. Um, I suppose it comes a little bit from my own um, my own training as an Alexander Technique teacher, uh, but I sort of see how effective it is. Uh, it's not like an add-on, you know, getting in touch with the body. Um, some people don't do see it as that. It's like, well, mindfulness is all about just meditating. Actually, it's not. There's so much more that we can do, of course. And maybe what I'm going to share with you today, uh, you're very familiar with. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to teach you how to soak eggs at all. But I thought it was a lovely opportunity for me to just share some of my thoughts about uh, body work and how useful I find it. But also how I've seen or how, uh, how effective I've seen it over the years when I teach uh, these courses, the, the Breathworks courses. And mindful movement is a big part, a huge part, actually, of that. And so why inhabit the body? What's useful about that? Maybe a good place to start. I'm going to, what I'm going to do then over the next um, 35 minutes or whatever, I'll keep a good eye on the time, is give you a little bit of preamble, which I've started. But I suppose most of the time I'd like to share some of the movements that um, I'm often delivering um, on the courses. So the mindful movements which come with the stress course in particular, I think they, the movements in the stress course are very simple, can be playful, um, but they're, they're sort of designed to get you, well, get people out of their heads because that's where we experience stress, you know, it's up in here, isn't it? We're just walking heads sometimes these days, well, maybe often. Get into the bodies and if people can become embodied, then... Um, the landscape can be calmer and it can be more focused and it can be more, more easy. And, you know, if you've ever tried to think your way out of stress, you can't do that. The more you try to think your way out of stress, then of course it feeds into it. So you become more stressed. So the, the principle behind it is to find a different approach and that would be to become more embodied. Notice what one's experience is in the body and then maybe we can start to work with it in that way. Um, and the breath is such a sort of such an important part of all of that. It sort of conditions uh, the body. So with a sustained attention on the breath, uh, the body and the mind can sort of come together. And we'll maybe move on to that a little bit uh, towards the end. So a little bit of preamble, which I'm sort of on now, but mostly I want to show you some of the movements and then I'll finish maybe 10 minutes before the my slot ends uh, with an idea of maybe carrying some of maybe that embodiment, hopefully, into um, a short sit. Uh, and I'll finish at uh, 10 past 12. Okay, uh, well, I've already said some stuff. 
yeah, if we're stressed, feel anxious, uh, feel threatened. I mean, maybe over the last three months, four months, you have felt threatened, felt a bit stressed, um, which should be totally understandable. And some of you have already mentioned that as we uh, did a short uh, reporting in. The body responds in a variety of ways. Um, so feeling stressed, often our breathing will uh, become a bit limited, a bit restricted. Um, as Dyke has sort of led us in that sit, he was really encouraging us to sort of bring our attention much more to that out breath. Because in my experience, certainly in the Alexander world, but um, certainly on the breathworks courses, we don't breathe out enough. We actually hold the breath in, hold the breath in a lot. And um, that changes the chemistry, our chemistry in the body. And over a period of time, um, we feel, you know, it's, it sort of actually adds to uh, not such a good place, you know, not much in, in the way of well-being. Um, so from, I suppose, from a Buddhist perspective, uh, Daika again touched on this, yeah, the first um, foundation of mindfulness, we start with the body, yeah. And one of my favourite, uh, just grab this, one of my favourite uh, texts to read is the um, Anapanasati Sutta. Um, this is Larry Rosenberg's sort of interpretation of it, and I think it's great. So the first four contemplations in the Anapanasati Sutta are all about being with the body. We start with the body, so it's the breath in the body. So we're noticing the breath being long and short in the body. We're noticing how it has an effect on calming the body. Uh, so there we go. It, it, it's, I suppose, from an Alexander point of view, it's, well, it's there, isn't it? It's really relevant, it's really present. If we can just bring our attention into our experience. It's present moment stuff, you know, which is what mindfulness is all about. So we can get a sense of being grounded. You know, it could be that you go, you feel it through your feet, you feel it on the chair that you're sitting, where's your points of contact? Then you have the weight going down into the chair. Um, so I suppose a lot of this preamble is all about, well, here's the body, but the body is so intimately connected to the breath. The two are there very much. And then, as I say, with more a sustained effort on that, you can bring the mind in as well. And uh, I, I love the way the Anapanasati Sutta takes you from the first four tetrads oh, about the body, but it takes you into feelings of pleasant and unpleasant, then it takes you into the mind, and then it takes you into the sort of dharmas. Um, and uh, it's great. I, mean, I, I just find it so practical. Uh, that's what I love about it. It really is a, a, a wonderful journey. And uh, he, Larry, writes about it so well. Okay. Um, stress people, getting them out of their heads. That's what we, would be the idea, the principle behind it. And if we can come out of their heads, then it changes that landscape of uh, feeling anxious, feeling stressed. We're more with our experience, like we're more just present, being with it, rather than in the head, we're often trying to work out how to get rid of it. Um, and uh, there are some ways in which we just can't get rid of that. So if we can pay attention to the sensations that we're experiencing with our awareness and we're tight, there's a tightness in the body, the body because we're stressed, it could be the shoulders, it could be the jaw, classic places, don't know, it could be a tongue. These are little places that you get people to look at and go, right, shoulders are up. Is, it, is there some way that I can breathe into that or can I release it? Um, so doing mindful movement is um, a great doorway in to getting people to notice this body of theirs because you'd be surprised how often we don't notice this body of ours. And this body of ours has a lot of wisdom in itself. So I will, and we will be uh, looking at some of the movements, uh, lead them. And um, yeah, the invitation is to sort of join me and try them out. Let's see what you think to them. <clears throat> uh, what else do I would like to say? Yeah, breath holding and also shallow breathing are sort of classic things that we do. In fact, even if you concentrate, sometimes we just lose that breath. I mean, I don't know if you notice as you walk up the stairs that you hold your breath as you get to the top of the stairs. What's that about? It's such a habit of ours, the breath holding. And uh, as, a, as a sort of strong habit of ours, it has an effect on, the, uh, on our bodies. I mean, posture, 
again, coming back to the Alexander technique, you ever tried to sort of blow a balloon up, curled over, <laughs> you, you, you really can't do it very well. You've got to sort of, well, I mean, you're probably all very familiar with sitting in a, a sort of open, um, spacious posture for a practice. You know, it's probably so common to us, but for lots of people, actually, just getting them to notice this heavy head, can we support it with this wonderful sort of strong spine of ours and we can sit um, with that sort of sense of uh, uprightness, you know, but not, not forced, not effortful. Uh, anything else I'd like to say? Yeah, maybe this is, might be a good example. So again, these are invitational things, but I'd like you maybe to try this out as an invite to try this out. So I'd like you to take your attention to your right hand, your right fist and make a really strong fist. Really hold that fist tightly, really tight with your right hand. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And see what happens to your breath. Do you notice if your breath changes? Does it, does it stop? Yeah, please uh, let it relax a little bit now and then just maybe let it go. Does your breath stop? Does your breath become um, shallow? <clears throat> Excuse me, as you tighten that, as you focused on that? That's a very simple example, and I've seen it time and time again with people that they just we just stop holding. So if you're in pain, that happens to a lot of people. They hold the breath because there's pain, and it's like, can we sort of work in a better way? But actually, if we're stressed and anxious, sometimes that really manifests in breath holding. Yeah. So the breath has a lot to do with. Um, as I say, a condition in the body. It has to do with the, the well-being of our joints, the well-being of our gut, the well-being of our heart rate. There's a lot that the breath has a lot to do with. Um, so even a few deeper breaths, as we were just exploring with diet practice, it stimulates the uh, autonomic nervous system. Yeah? So physiologically, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic are working side by side. And actually the deeper breaths, you know, the longer breaths actually stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our, um, the calming part of our nervous system. And particularly if you can take your attention into your back when you're doing a practice, and exactly as Adaika was sort of leading us through that, there then, you know, the more that we can sort of maybe get into that, um, notice our experience in the back or notice our experience, there in the back then it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system and the more that that gets stimulated the more the body relaxes and then the various receptors in the body say it's not under threat it's okay and uh, you know that sort of parasympathetic nervous system working well for us there's a little quote then from uh Thich Nhat Hanh that i wanted to read a bit about first steps in improving our breathing and he says that uh, the bridge it's the bridge. So breath is the bridge that connects life to consciousness, which unites your body to your thoughts. Whenever your mind becomes scattered, use your breath as the means to take hold of your mind again. Now that's probably to all of us. Um, yeah, we've been there many a time, but actually we can sort of sometimes forget that, that mindfulness of breathing practice befriending the breath and, and really sort of making good use of it. Um, yeah, it can, it can do its wonders. Uh, so just maybe a little bit more and then we'll move on to some uh, movements. In the movements that we're going to look at, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, have worked very well uh, from the breathworks context that we have to sort of start off with people. Uh, so we talk about, in breathworks, we talk about hard and soft edges. Uh, so for example, um, one movement is, I'll just hold uh, my hand up, is, it, is it an, an opening and a closing of our hand, you know, making a soft fist, making a, a sort of wide open palm. You can actually do this very hard. You can really tighten it. And actually, if you, yeah, you just try that. If you tighten it a lot, that hard edge is an edge where actually it's uncomfortable. It becomes even painful um, and even possibly damaging. But the soft edge would be where you're not even you're not even feeling any sort of stretch. So you have to work out what your hard and soft edges are. 
don't go to the hard edge you know invariably actually i've seen this so many times people want to get it right and we go to the hard edge if you notice that like i would say just put 80 percent effort into it don't go for the hundred percent just 80 percent so hard and soft edges um, is important um, this is really important for people who have had years and years of chronic pain and some of us may have chronic pain ourselves so um, these movements that I'm going to introduce to you just you look after yourselves you know you, you know how best to do that so if uh, we're going to do a shoulder roll um, so if you have one shoulder that doesn't work so well well start with the, the the good shoulder so to speak start with the one that does work well because to start with the one that doesn't work so well really sets us off in a bit of a downward spiral. So important to sort of note that really. Um, as well as um, hard and soft edges, we, we're going to, as best we can, incorporate the breath into the movements. So several of the movements really suit uh, incorporating the breath. So we're going to move to the rhythm of our breath, uh, which is something that we don't do. We, we just generally breathe and move. But actually, we're really going to try as best we can to notice the rhythm of our breath and move to the rhythm of that. And that in itself can be quite uh, meditative. Um, I think that's it, actually. I'm, going, I'm not going to say any more. I'd like us to have a chance to maybe have about 15 or 20 minutes of some, some movements. So most of these uh, I'm going to show you are uh, standing up ones. Is, does that work for everyone to stand up? Um, in, in your rooms if it doesn't then okay you know we can do we can do seated ones as well but yeah if if you can stand up we'll try that if standing up isn't doesn't work then let it go and we'll we'll work out some seated ones okay um so whether you know you have a i'll just step back a little bit whether you have a, a nice carpeted floor uh, or you've just got uh, a nice wooden floor. It's, it's not really in a sense a movement, but it's a place to arrive. So if you're standing, just notice the points of contact that your feet are making with the floor. Okay, if, if you're comfortable uh, with closing your eyes, do that and just see what that's like. If you're not, then you know, don't close your eyes and just, just make sure that you feel well balanced in the room that you don't fall over. So yeah, notice in the points of contact. Are you over your toes? Do you notice that you may be over your heels a little bit? Are you on the outsides of your, your feet or are you on the insides of your feet? There isn't, there isn't a right or wrong here. We're sort of really just connecting with this thing called our bodies. So see if you can, in a sense, like plug into the ground as if you, it was a, a three pin plug and you, you sort of plug it in. Um, hoping that you can sort of keep your knees fairly soft as you're doing this. Noticing your big toe, small toe, heel. And of course, noticing your breath, which is a constant factor, constant companion to our experience. All right. Okay, so we're gonna move from there. So yeah, uh, if you're ready you, to move on, opening your eyes. So one of the first movements that we do is a very gentle, uh, it's going to be a very gentle twist from side to side. So knees are soft and feet are hip width apart or maybe slightly wider. And the movement, sort of movement comes from the hips. So your, your upper body just moves around. And if you can, as much as you can, let your arms just be soft and hanging down by your sides as you move your upper torso from side to side. You might notice that the hands just sort of swing around. If you feel a bit more energetic, you could put some more energy into it and let, let them almost, your arms fly up a little bit. 
it's up to you, you know, looking after yourself. Maybe just another 10 seconds, but at any point you want to stop, feel free to stop, please do. Okay, and allowing that movement just to come to stillness. Not a, not a sort of um, uh, an abrupt stop, just allowing it to come to stillness. And now just notice what you're feeling. Notice what your experience is. What's the sensation? Your breath may have um, increased a bit. There may be some tingling on your fingers. There may be some tingling in other parts of your body. So we're just tuning into sort of this, uh, this body of ours. Notice if it's pleasant or unpleasant. Some people really don't like mindful movement. <laughs> some people really love it. It's a bit of a Marmite situation, really. And noticing what your breath is doing. Okay. All right. Let's just move on to uh, another movement. Um, yeah, as we're as we're all up and about, let's do a sort of circling of the hips. And I'm trying to show you. If I come a bit closer, actually. Yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be a bit like that. So you can either put your hands where your your kidneys are. And if I try to show you there, so you've got a bit of support and your kidneys at the back, or just on your hips, whatever you're comfortable with. And again, feet hip width apart, maybe slightly wider, and just rotating round. Let's go left. Let's go anti-clockwise to start with. Well, actually, you can choose what you want to do. But yeah, we'll go one way. As I say, soft knees. Pretty much, you have to have soft ankles for this as well. And once we've done several of those come to stop and then go the other way. So the, the idea behind this is that it's the quality of your awareness while you're doing this. It's not about the range, it's not about the, uh, how far you can move, whether you can do it better than anyone else in the room. It's really about the quality of your awareness. Where does your mind go when you're doing this? And when you feel ready, let's just bring that to a stop. And yeah, just let your arms rest down by your side. And again, let's just have a, a small pause and notice what our experience is like. What do your feet feel like at the minute? How about your knees, shoulders? As if I was doing this in a session, I'd be asking people what their experience was, but um, I won't be doing that over Zoom. Okay, um, <clears throat> are we still all right to stand? Some people are standing, some people are not. Whatever, if you're not standing and you're on a chair, then we're going to do a shoulder roll. So you can sit and do a shoulder roll on the chair. But if you're standing, you could, you could do it if you're <coughs> prepared to stand. So the shoulder roll, let's take our attention to, to whatever shoulder works best for you. Some people have... Um, tightness in their shoulders, some people have uncomfortable pain in their shoulders. So if you have some of that, then just be so careful with that, or don't even go there. You know, we don't need any sharp pain. Um, so I'm going to go to my right shoulder, and it's going to be simply a roll up to the top, and then a roll down. Again, my knees are soft. Noticing not to tense my neck. And I've started, I'm sort of doing it in a sort of... Um, anti-clockwise way. So you could incorporate your breathing with this. So as you breathe in, bring your shoulder up to the top. As you breathe out, let your shoulder go down. It's not a huge movement. Maybe you do five or six of that. And then just let your, um, your arm rest by its side. And then go the other way. And often, one way seems much easier than the other. Gentle movements into the joints. Sometimes they, uh, they tell us uh, they start clicking.
All right. And when you're ready, just bringing that to a pause. Now, because we've started just one side, it's a good opportunity to just check in. How's the right shoulder feel in comparison to the left or whatever shoulder you didn't move? So the shoulder that you have moved, how does that feel to the one that's just been stationary? Is there a difference? Does one feel more alive? Is one warmer? Is there no difference? We're sort of really trying to get people to tune into um, their bodily experience. So let's take our attention to the shoulder you haven't moved, if you want, if you want to, and moving out. So again, connecting with the breath, as I breathe in, I move it up, and you breathe out, I move it down. And then coming to a pause, you can do four, five, six rotations, and then do the other way. Now, for some of us who are quite fit and able, this might seem like a child's play. And often I've been in sessions where somebody says, oh, this is really boring. <laughs> Actually, well, notice what boring is like and uh, what's the quality of awareness going on there. And then when you're ready, just coming to a stop altogether. Let's notice what the, the, that shoulder experience is like. Is it, is it different to the other one there? Is it the same? It's just coming back time and time again because our mind will want to wander off, of course. If you feel like you want to do that more energetically, um, I'm going to clunk the ceiling, in, but you can, of course, you can sort of do a whole arm rotation. Oops, don't, don't knock the lights or anything. And for some people, that, that really feels much more um, engaging. And then the other way, Yeah, so maybe two or three or four, one way and then the other way and then stop and notice what that's like. And let's take our attention to the other arm. And then you can find a way of combining your breath with this. So it might be as you breathe in, the whole arm comes up to the ceiling, hand points to the ceiling and then you breathe out, hand points to the floor. <clears throat> Notice your breathing as we do this, and then go the other way. Okay, and when you're ready, just come into a stop. Okay, as I say, some people really prefer it when they can be a bit more energetic. Um, but for some people just who have shoulder issues, uh, uh, just the smallest of movements um, is effective, can be effective. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> a, few, uh, a few movements that we do are sort of based on Qigong. Uh, so I'll do a couple of these um, and then we'll come into seated. And I'll just do a couple of seated ones before we finish off. Yeah, so feet slightly wider than um, your hips. Again, your knees are soft, and um, if, you're to, if you're happy to carry on standing doing this, you can actually sit and do this, but yeah, standing, I think it works more effectively if you, if you have to do it. Bring your hands in to where your belly is, as if uh, it's right where your belly button is, as if you're holding uh, a beach ball, yeah, and tuning into the breath. So as I breathe in, I bring my hands up to where my throat is, where my face is. And as I breathe out, my hands go back down. And I turn around, as I breathe in, my hands come up. And then hands go down. So finding the rhythm of your breathing, which is normal and natural, and move your hands to that rhythm. And I think this works very well with the breath. So breathe in, hands come up. Breathe out, hands go down. And try to notice any excess tension that we bring into the shoulders. 
see if the shoulders can be as relaxed as possible. And maybe just one more, and when you're ready, you just allow them, our hands, just to come down by our side. And if you if your knees have been soft and you've been down a little bit, just coming back up to standing comfortably and easily. Notice what that's, that experience is like. Probably notice it across your shoulders. Okay, slight variation on that movement. So again, coming back into you know, mindfully, so I'm preparing yourself, soft knees. I bring my hands in to the belly area again. And as I breathe in, my hands come up. As I breathe out, my hands go away. As I breathe, my hands come in. And then down. So breathe in, up, breathe out, away. Breathe in, come back to the body. Breathe out, go down. So you find your rhythm. And maybe a couple more. And on the final one, just allowing your arms to come down by your side. And if you are slightly down in your haunches, just coming up to standing. Tune in, notice your experience. Okay, and maybe one final variation <coughs> on uh, these ones. So again, uh, coming down a little bit, soft knees, bringing my hands in to the belly area. So this time, hands are gonna come up to up to my face and then they're going to go really wide open as if you had a massive hug and then bring them back in and then down. So breathe in, out, in and down. Again, see if you can find a rhythm that works for you with your breath. Really feel that opening across the chest. Noticing your shoulders really wide. If your hands can gracefully flow. Quality of awareness. And maybe two more. And when you've finished that cycle, allowing your arms just to come down by your side. Standing at ease, so to speak. And if you're comfortable with this, close your eyes just for a moment or so as we finish these standing movements. Letting go of any efforts. Just noticing how your body feels now. Is it different to when we started 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago? Or not? Okay. Um, we we'll just come back into our chairs. Just a, a couple of uh, seated ones. Mm -hmm. For those who uh, struggle to stand, um, everything in the breathworks world is invitational. Uh, so always encouraging people to look after themselves, whatever that means. So if they need to duck out because um, too much standing, whatever, it, um, it's, it's important that they do that, that they have that sort of agency for themselves. Okay. Uh, 
going to that first one, uh, which I just showed you, the opening and the closing. Um, so you can, you can support your hand with the other hand, or you can just, if you've got a cushion on your lap, you can just have your hands resting, palm facing the ceiling on the cushion. Um, and even though this may seem so simple, actually, it can be so effective for some people, uh, particularly people who have arthritis or RSI. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely, simple movement. Um, so as I, as I described it at the beginning, it's the opening and the closing. So it's, a, it's an open hand. Again, just working out what your hard and soft edges might be and closing. So it's a, a soft sort of fist and an open palm. And again, this again, you can really tune into your breath. So notice your breath and it might be that as you breathe in, you bring your fingers in. As you breathe out, you open up your palm. It might, this might work better if you close your eyes and really be with the experience, but whatever works for you. Okay, and after maybe several of those movements, just letting that hand rest. If it was your right hand, compare it with your left now. Whatever hand you use, just see if there is a difference. I mean, the more you practice these, the more you sort of intentionally turn on you know, your um, the spotlight on your experience. Um, subtle, subtle changes, subtle movements um, really stand out. So for me, the right is a little bit more alive. It's actually a little bit warmer. So take, taking our attention to our other hand, which are one you started with, and doing the same. Find your breath. See if you can combine the movement with the breath. And maybe one or two more opening and closing movements. And when you're ready or if you've stopped all, all together, just check in. Check in with your experience. Check in with your hands. Check in with your body. And notice what your breath is doing at this moment. So what I'd like to do is just take us now into a short sit. Um, so would you like to find <clears throat> the, the place which works best for you, which works best for your posture? I mean, it's literally gonna be 10 minutes. So if you wanna stay where you are, fine, but whatever works. So something uh, that we say a lot in Breathworks, I think this really does come from Vidyamala, um, is uh, releasing into gravity. Gravity is there just all the time. And sometimes when you pay attention to that, you notice that you're holding yourself up. Um, I work with people who posture a lot, and I notice that there's a bit of a habit or they don't even know whether they sit up a bit too much. Just notice if you're a bit arched, if you're a bit a bit up and stiff, soften. So taking your attention maybe into your sitting bones, letting the weight of the sitting bones really be supported by the chair. Maybe taking your attention down to your feet, connected to the ground.
So as we transit from movement into stillness, taking our time, we don't need to rush this. I often find for myself, some movement really sets me up well uh, for a, a, a sat practice, for a still practice. Noticing our experience, the weight of the body resting, being supported by the floor, by the cushion, by a chair. You may have noticed a bit of tightness somewhere. Maybe it's softened or if you notice any tightness now, can you soften it? Can we allow the shoulders just to Settle back. And of course, as soon as we sort of touch into the body, following closely or almost at the same time is this breath of ours. So notice your breath as it flows in and out. And see if we can really have a long out breath. As if you were sort of blowing one of those uh, bubbles. You know, you get that uh, solution and you blow it's not too hard, but you have to do it enough to get the bubble out. It might help just to purse your lips and just let it go, softly blowing out. Then there's a pause and allowing the breath naturally to flow back in, because it will, the body will always do that. Let breathing look after itself as we breathe back in. Notice how the breath changes the shape of the chest. There's a gentle rise and fall. Maybe just following the breath in, all the way in. Follow that breath out, all the way out. You may notice where the breath moves your belly. So, of course, physiologically, the diaphragm moves down, the belly moves out, moves in. So we're paying attention to that part of the body, around the belly at the front, maybe to the sides and round to your back. See if you can notice your breath. Notice where your mind may be, where is it gone to? Of course, it will wander off. Can we invite it back? Come back to this anchor of our body, this anchor that is our breath.
maybe just for the last minute or so, noticing where the breath first enters your body, the uh, final stage of the mindfulness of breathing. Is it the tip of your nose, just inside your nose? Watch the breath flow over that point. So in a moment, we're going to bring this practice to a close. So in your own way, beginning to broaden out from maybe the focus of the breath as it passes over that chosen point, to hear the sense of the whole of the breath in your chest or your back. Maybe have a sense of the whole of your body as you sit Just noticing how you're feeling. What's the emotional weather like at this moment now? And when you feel ready, bring the practice to a close. <laughs>